Our battle as a nation is large, particularly now, but our struggles as individuals can be equally striking. There is, of course, the COVID-19 virus, but also pandemics within the pandemic, which continue to be global threats. Things like cervical cancer, endometriosis, and other illnesses that the human body can yield to. It's Cervical Cancer Awareness Month, and we've packaged some details to help you if this is all too close to home. Hi everyone, I'm Theodore Henry. Welcome to another Wednesday with Jamaica Magazine. Here's information tailored just right to help you. Let's start with the news. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, April 14. The weekend curfews imposed as part of measures to reduce the spread of COVID-19 have been extended for another three weeks, but the hours will be modified. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the weekend curfew will now begin at 4 p.m. on Saturdays, ending 5 a.m. the next day and at 2 p.m. on Sundays until 5 the next morning. However, there will be no closing at half day on Fridays. Meanwhile, the curfew hours for weekdays, Mondays to Fridays, remains from 8 p.m. to 5 the next morning. In a statement to Parliament Tuesday, Prime Minister Andrew Holness said the measures had been successful in slowing down the spread of the virus, but the positivity and hospitalization rates remained too high for comfort. The public sector positivity rate, which is the rate that we pay attention to, is based upon the more reliable PCR tests and that was 25.7%. So of the PCR tests that were done uh, within the, the public sector, meaning within the public health sector, 25% of those tests, 25.7% of those tests came back positive. What we would consider as manageable is 5%. So we are uh, five times higher than where we should be. Mr. Holness says the other COVID-19 containment measures remain largely unchanged until May 4. The ban on funerals remains, while the maximum number of people in church has been increased from 12 to 30, but services must take place outside of curfew hours. The restriction on face-to-face -face classes also continues, including students who are sitting exit examinations. But the Prime Minister says exams scheduled to be held before May 4 are permitted at physical locations. At the same time, existing work-from-home protocols in the public sector will continue until May 4, while private sector employers are urged to allow eligible employees to work from home. The gathering limit remains at 10. As it regards protecting the borders, the United Kingdom travel ban will continue until April 30, at which point it will expire and is not expected to be renewed. The travel ban for Brazil, Chile, Peru, Colombia, Argentina and Paraguay has been extended until May 4. And the Prime Minister says other existing protocols, including the requirement for all travelers to present a negative COVID-19 test that is conducted within three days of travel, remain in place. So too the requirement to self-quarantine for 14 days after arrival. Chief Justice Brian Sykes says action is being taken to release outstanding transcripts and judges' notes from the High Court and Parish Courts. Justice Sykes says while the delays are having an adverse effect on the justice system, the challenges in producing the documents are due to a staff shortage. He adds that in the Parish Courts, the number of judges were increased without the necessary support to quickly prepare notes of evidence, while in the Supreme Court, particularly on the criminal side, inefficiencies still exist. We have a number of practices there that really need to be changed in order to become more productive and also the upskilling of court reporters within the unit. You have some excellent ones there, but you also have court reporters who need to embrace the new vision and the trajectory and the path that we have taken in order to serve the people of Jamaica better. The Chief Justice was speaking recently at the swearing-in ceremony for six judges and two masters in chambers. The Jamaica Urban Transit Company, JUTC, is extending the time period granted to sub-franchise operators to pay their road license fees. Corporate communications manager at the JUTC, Cecil Toms, says the fees, which are normally due at the end of March, will become due on May 14. 
He says the JUTC is mindful of the impact that COVID-19 has had on the operations of the transport sector and is playing its part to ensure people's livelihoods are not disrupted. We thought it important after discussions with the transport minister to grant them an extension in the payment of their fees. Now, in addition to that extension, we have given operators a 15% discount in their fees as well. And this must be seen as a continuation of our efforts to empathize with operators. And finally, State Minister of Education, Youth and Information, Robert Morgan, is calling on Jamaicans to recommit their energies, talents, and intellectual abilities towards protecting children. He was speaking during yesterday's virtual launch of Child Month 2021. Mr. Morgan commended the various child-related institutions for helping to build awareness on how to protect children and their rights, but said more needed to be done to curtail violence against children. This is not just related to corporal punishment, which persons like myself, the Prime Minister, and many other well-thinking Jamaicans continue to condemn and encourage the banning of, not just within the government service which we have, but seek to ban it nationally and remove it from our culture as a means of discipline. But also speaking about sexual violence, which continues to be one of the greatest challenges that we face as a society. The state minister encouraged the Jamaicans to report incidents of child abuse during Child Month and beyond, pointing out that there could be no arrest of perpetrators without a report and no consequence without evidence. Child Month 2021 will be observed in May under the theme, I strive to overcome adversities with resilience. I soar. The National Child Month Committee will host virtual events during May, starting with the National Church Service on Sunday, May 2, at the Linstead Pentecostal Tabernacle in St. Catherine. National Children's Day will be celebrated on Friday, May 21. Children 6 to 17 years old will have the opportunity to give their best interpretation of the Child Month theme in song, dance, poetry, or the playing of a musical instrument. These will be showcased on Children's Day on various social media platforms. Child Month celebrations will culminate with a day of prayer on Wednesday, May 26. Churches across the island will use the day to pray for the nation's children. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. To properly carry out a hand rub, apply a palmful of the product in your cupped hand, covering all surfaces. Rub your hands palm to palm. Rub your right palm over the back of your left hand with interlaced fingers and vice versa. Rub your hands palm to palm with fingers interlaced. Rub the back of your fingers to opposing palms with fingers interlocked. Rotationally rub backwards and forwards the clasped fingers of your right hand in your left palm and vice versa. Once your hands are dry, they are now safe. Our strength is seen in the little things we do, things like lifting, pulling, but you realize how fragile the human body becomes when illnesses threaten our very existence. That's why checking up on your health is very important. Cervical cancer is one of the most preventable cancers once detected. Imagine that. Now here's the story of one woman who was diagnosed. She had her first child at 16 and the second just past the age of 19. Her life was going well until at age 26, she started to experience excruciating pain with abnormally heavy periods. She dismissed it. Maybe it's stress, a miscalculation of the period start date. Until one night, the pain became too unbearable to ignore. When I went to the doctor, she said, do a pap smear. When I did the pap smear, three weeks after, she called me and said, what they see? The pap smear don't come back normal. I have to go and do a colposcopy. Her doctor advised her to see a gynecologist. At the gynecologist, a test was done and an emergency colposcopy ordered. A colposcopy is the insertion inside of you with a camera and all the tests to see what's happening. And when they did the, the biopsy and everything and it come back, I was literally at a state three 
cervical cancer. At 26 with two children, and at a stage three cancer, all you hear about cancer is death. Determined to fight, she weighed her options. Her treatment of choice was radiation and chemotherapy at the Kingston Public Hospital. Radiation burns your body. Can you imagine, you cannot have a shower for at least three to four months. You just have to cut and do everything. You cannot eat normal food because if you do, you're going to have constant diarrhea or vomiting because your system starts to pain. But thank God for KPH, there were some good doctors there. Very good doctors who encouraged me, who loved me through this as I was one of the youngest young girls at KPH at that time. We were going through this and doing this treatment. And I said, okay, I'm going to eat. And I went through it. I prayed, thank God. He had a plan for me and I'm here today. And I am here with, with this team saying, taking responsibility. It's not the government to take responsibility for you. I'm going to encourage parents to encourage your children to take care of them, to protect them from this act before it's too late. Some of us don't show signs. But look at me today. Thanks to KPH. Thanks to the good doctors. Thanks that. Thanks that at 26 I didn't have any money. So what would I do? Don't I would I die? And I hear people talk about the system. No. They are there to help us. I pay a little money. That's why I'm standing here today with the grace of God. Amen. Right? So go to the clinics and go with a good attitude and talk to your nurse and your doctor and you will see how it work out. So remember, take responsibility for who? You and your Okay. For more information on cervical cancer caused by the human papilloma virus, call 888-1LOVE. That's 888-663-5683. You may also email hpvinfo at moh.gov.jm. You've already received some useful bit of information, correct? Well, for other challenges that women might face, like endometriosis, here's a bit of help from the experts. I was always so miserable during my period, for as long as I can remember. The pain was so severe. I remember not having an appetite, nauseous. It was difficult to stand. It felt like a monthly interruption of my life. It continued for years, an endless cycle of suffering. I had no idea what was wrong with me. Then I was diagnosed with endometriosis. Endometriosis is a chronic painful condition of women in their reproductive years. So the condition occurs when the tissue that is normally inside the womb, called the endometrium, gets on the outside. This organ here is the uterus or the womb and within it is the endometrium. This is the tissue that is normally shed each month when you have a menstrual flow or a period. It behaves normally when it flows and you have a period. However, if this tissue flows backwards through the fallopian tube, this structure here, it can land on the ovary, this white structure here, and form endometriotic cysts called endometriomas. It can run down the back of the womb and form deposits here, which can cause pain. The most common symptoms are very painful periods. You may also have infertility and pain during intercourse. 
Now, if the, the endometriotic deposits end up in other places, um, for example, endometriosis has been found in almost every tissue in the body. So it can be in the eye, so rarely you may have intermittent blindness. It can be in the lung, so you can have shortness of breath, um, symptoms of a collapsed lung in the brain. You can have seizures. To diagnose endometriosis, we start with a history, the history of the painful periods. For those patients, we'll ideally do an abdominal and a pelvic examination. The gold standard test is a surgical procedure called laparoscopy. That's where we use a camera, which is inserted in through the, just below the belly button or the umbilicus, and using powerful lighting sources and optics, we're able to look and examine the pelvis, and then we can see the endometriotic deposits. My journey with endometriosis began about seven to eight years ago when I was trying to get pregnant and couldn't figure out why. Went to the doctor and after doing several tests, he asked about endometriosis. I'd never heard of it. And he said, well, we do a non-invasive surgery, which is a laparoscopic. They go in through the navel. By this, we use a camera, as I said, and we use a set of surgical instruments, which allow us to enter the, the abdomen through very small incisions and we're able to locate the deposits and we try to excise them or remove them from the pelvis in its entirety. So I did the surgery and unfortunately I had what was called a spontaneous abortion that didn't hold. Tried again a few months later and I got pregnant. I went to about five months and unfortunately the baby died in vitro. I have not been able to ever get pregnant again. After making a diagnosis, um, the mainstay of treatment is going to be dependent on your stage of the disease. Um, so there are medical treatments, so we can use painkillers, oral contraceptive pills, surgical techniques. If you are having debilitating pain, if you're missing school, if you're missing work, then that's not normal and you need to seek the appropriate help. There are specialists who are um, well trained both in terms of picking up the symptoms and making the diagnosis and in terms of treatment and the earlier you're treated the, the better the outcome is likely to be. I think every woman should get checked because we've grown up to hear that once you have a bad period it's a norm unfortunately for those of us who have it it's not the norm. I started following Shauna Fuller's story and finding out how she found out that she had it. And I offered my services. I said, I want to spread the word. I volunteered. They have a support group. I went there and met with others. And I also got involved in the march. If you find out you have it, join the Base Foundation. Be a support for somebody. There's nothing better than just that encouraging word. And just know that there's somebody out there who understands can only encourage our women, if, the, if any of these symptoms seem to be occurring to you, seek appropriate help through your local obstetrician gynecologist and be referred to a specialist. If I knew then what I know now, that it had a name, that I wasn't alone, know that you know, don't suffer in silence. Endometriosis affects one in every 10 women and girl worldwide. In Jamaica, over 10,000 women are affected by the disease. Many are not aware that they have it. As we continue to push through the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic as a whole, government continues to pursue every initiative to help. Our objective remains resolute, a COVID-19 free Jamaica. As the vaccine drive continues, wear your mask. Here's how some hope interns are making their contribution to the objective. As 
graduate from Hope and Fashion Design in Level 2. I'm currently studying Fashion Design in Level 3 at the moment. Um, the course was about to finish on um, March, March 31st and it was put out because of the coronavirus. So now I'm here making masks. I'm here day on almost every single day trying to make a mask. Um, I'll use 100 masks to supply. So each day I'm here working, 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 working. When COVID started um, and when the outbreak started in Jamaica, uh, we realized that we had no choice but to shut down all training, and especially by um, what we did at Hope. So we had community-based training, we had institutional-based training like you see here at, at this Heart Academy. When we realized what was happening with COVID and the need for wearing masks by the general public, we decided to recall some of these youngsters who had then been at home for a few weeks, not earning a stipend, not doing anything. Um, so we recall them and we put systems in place here, um, very, very strict controls um, to maintain the sterile environment, uh, the sanitizing processes, and at the same time to have them making these masks. Making these masks, these whole program masks, these can basically benefit Jamaica by preventing the spreading of coronavirus. And I live by the philosophy where there is hope, but there is life. The Heart Trust Garmex Academy on Marcus Garvey Drive has become a tenacious player in the island's fight against COVID-19. What started as an initiative to engage numerous unattached young people enrolled in the Housing Opportunity Production and Employment Hope program has begun to bring hope to countless Jamaicans. The team of approximately 25 Hope trainees, 10 instructors, and numerous volunteers is tasked with the daily target of producing 1,000 reusable fabric masks that will be supplied to some of the less fortunate among us. The masks are made uh, and supplied. We try to get them to the to most vulnerable groups. So we send them to infirmaries, to children's homes. We send them to other social workers um, groups that are out there working in the communities as we speak. We have provided these masks to the Ministry of Health social teams that are deployed. Um, but there is also a number of corporate entities who have come to us uh, because they're on the front line. Um, food service, for instance, as you may be aware, um, Island Grill was one of our biggest supporters um, and encouraging us to, to do more and get more of these masks out and they were the first ones to come on board. Colonel Rickman, who is Ingenuity, started the manufacture and design of the Hope Mask and we naturally turned to him because of the ongoing partnership that we had. And this is all we are saying thank you. So we have brought our team down to, you know, go ahead and be the interns and anybody else who might have been uh, participants in producing these things for us. And I hope it's an example for others to follow suit. I invite other entities to come on board with us, donate some masks. There are entities now who are buying masks and allowing us simply to give it away. Each mask is sold at a cost of $350 and are done to exact specifications. We reach out to the Bureau of Standards as well as the Minister of Health um, to look at various materials, look at various makeup and the design of the mask. And I'm happy to say that the, these masks that are made by Hope, um, they're made with material that are already um, water repellent or moisture repellent, but it's made with a level of comfort. It's in three layers um, so that it, it significantly reduces the the possibility. Um, so it's not a guarantee, but it significantly reduces the possibility of moisture and um, vapor to, to enter into the system. Or um, for those who may have the virus, if everybody's wearing it, it will protect them from passing it on as well. All of these masks are made in the Jamaican colors, as you can see. Uh, and they're made because we wanted to inspire a sense of you know, that we as Jamaicans, we are all in this thing together.
The masks are made by these young persons who would otherwise have been doing nothing at home. So they're earning a, a bit of a stipend whilst they're um, making these masks. They're doing something good for the country. They're um, in their own way, they're contributing, they're giving their own service back by contributing, making masks, albeit for a small stipend. Starting a program, changing. Right now, I want to become the best fashion designer there is, if there's such thing. And I just, I'm just here working to the best of my ability to gain more experience and strengthen my skills and just let it take place from there. The stipend is, is the starter for me. So the, the stipend basically started me. So now I, am, I own my own business and the business name is For Your Glory Design. I know I can fetch for my family and myself. I'm more confident in sewing than before because I can do a lot more than I can that I could do before. Like pattern making, jacket suits. I'm actually making masks for my community also. I'm selling them in my own community. Yeah. So fashion is fashion is a good thing for me and all did a lot. It's just me, it did a lot for me. While doubts around the AstraZeneca vaccine continues, some persons are still opting to get inoculated. Still, there continues to be some dissuading talks. To find out what's real or not, our team met with expert epidemiologist, Dr. Peter Figueroa. There was a concern about blood clots, but I can tell you the majority of persons who develop COVID and have to be admitted to hospital you have to put them on anticoagulants in order to prevent them from developing blood clots. So when the regulatory organism, the, the regulatory body, the European Medicine Agency, investigated this problem, they found that overall there were fewer blood clots in persons who had received the vaccine than what they would normally expect in the population because people developing clots happens all the time, but they actually found overall there was fewer blood clot formation in those who were vaccinated. It's understandable for people to be, some people to be hesitant. I say let's vaccinate those who are ready and as we vaccinate more persons, others will see that the vaccine is safe. The most you get is a little local reaction, a little fever, headache, maybe for a day or two. That's just your body responding to the vaccine. So this is a very good vaccine and it can help us to control the epidemic and get us back to normal. <laughs> We're at your final destination and thank you so much for allowing the Jamaica Magazine team to sit with you in your homes or offices for these few 30 minutes. You could easily schedule some more time with us just by watching some of our other shows on our YouTube channel and by visiting the JIS website at www.jis.gov.jm or our Facebook, Instagram and Twitter pages. On behalf of the entire production team here at the JIS, I'm Theodore Henry. Take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Jamaica.